Welcome to chapter 3 of this SOLIDWORKS beginner series. In this chapter, we will take a look at assemblies. First, we need to have a look at reference geometry. SOLIDWORKS provides reference geometry tools to help in the creation of sketches and features and for using measurement tools. Reference geometry includes items such as planes, axes, coordinate systems, and points. These reference geometry tools utilize existing part and assembly geometry, and the reference geometry updates according to the entities it's linked to. In this lesson, we will use two parts to demonstrate how the point axis and coordinate system reference geometry can be inserted into the assembly. These lesson files can be downloaded from the link in the description of this video. There are three files for this exercise. There is the block part, the pin part, and the assembly file. So to follow along with this lesson, just use the assembly file. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. Here we have an assembly with a block part and a pin part, and we want to add some reference geometry to the assembly. In this lesson, we will add a point reference, an axis, and a coordinate system. To access the Reference Geometry tool, you can either go to the Insert menu at the top and then Reference Geometry, and you can find all the Reference Geometry tools there, such as Plane, Axis, Coordinate System, Point, etc. Or on the Assembly tab of the Feature Manager tree, just go over to the Reference Geometry and click on the little triangle to drop the menu down, and here you should see all the tools available. And so in this lesson, we are going to focus on the Point, Axis, and Coordinate System. For this lesson, click on the Point Reference tool, and then you should see some options available in the Property Manager on the side. The first window displays the selected entities used to create the reference point. There are also other options below that assist in selecting the specific geometry in the assembly. With no selections made in the options, we can click any available point on a component in the assembly. For example, we could click this arc on the block part, and you'll notice that this automatically selects the midpoint of the arc. Whenever you start making selections, you should see a preview appear of your reference geometry. So here you can see a small purple dot, and that is representing the point reference geometry if we were to click OK and accept the changes. So if we click on the green check mark to select that, you'll see that there is a point added in our graphics area, and there is also a point added to our feature manager tree. So reference geometry acts as like any other feature in SOLIDWORKS, so you can edit it by either clicking on the point and going to Edit Feature, or in this case we want to delete it, which you can do by right-clicking on it and going to Delete, which will simply delete the reference point from our model. Just be aware that when you delete reference geometry, you may get a pop-up coming up. Usually this is because there may be parts of the model that have been designed around that reference geometry, and so by deleting it, you're sort of breaking the model because it doesn't have that reference anymore. So just be aware that when you do start deleting reference geometry, you may actually destroy the model by doing so. Let's create another reference geometry point, but this time we're going to take a look at some of these additional options. If the first option, Arc Center, is chosen, what this is going to do is place a reference point at the center of the arc on the plane. So if we click on this arc, just like in our first, very first example, it's going to place a reference point at the center of the arc. We want to move on to the next one, which is center of face, but to do that first, we may have to clear our selections. So in the selection box, you can right click on it and go to clear selections. And then we are going to move on to the center of face. So click on the center of face option. And this time it's going to create a reference point at the center location of the face we select. So if we click on this square face on the top of this part, you'll notice that the reference point is going to be right in the middle of that face. This also works for cylindrical or curved faces. So for example, if we clear this selection and we select this arced face here, it's going to put a center point right at the midpoint or at the center of that face of the arc. Again, clear the selections and we'll move on to the next option, which is intersection. With the intersection option, you need to choose two entities that intersect at a point. For example, if we select this top edge here and this edge here, where these two lines intersect or where these two edges intersect is where it's going to put a reference point geometry. Or another example to just to show you that the edges don't always have to touch each other, you could select this top edge and then this 
edge, and the point is going to be where those two edges intersect. Again, clear these selections and we'll move on to the next one, which is projection. With this one, we need to select a plane and a point to project the point onto the selected plane. Keep in mind the projection path is normal to the plane. So for this one, if you click on this face on the side of the block and then click on the point here, it's going to project this point onto this the plane of this face. So if you rotate this, you'll see that the point is sort of being projected onto this face, but it doesn't have to line up exactly or be exactly on that part. It just needs to be on that plane. So control seven to go back to an isometric view and we will right click to clear these selections and move on to the next one, which is on point. With this, we can use a point in a sketch to create a reference point. Expand the feature manager tree and then expand the block part and then go down to the boss extrude and expand that. And you should see the original sketch that it has been based on. Right click on this sketch and then go to show. This way you can see the sketch in our model. Now for our reference geometry, making sure the on point is still selected, we could click on this point of our sketch and a reference point is going to be created at that location. Control seven to go back to an isometric view. We are going to clear that selection and also we are going to hide that sketch as we no longer need it. The last option is to enable multiple instances. This allows us to insert multiple reference points that are spaced by distance, percentage, or to be evenly distributed. So if we click on that, we should see those options of distance, percentage, and evenly distribute. If we select evenly distribute, and we're going to change this to five instances, and then for our selection, we are going to select this circular entity, and you should notice that five reference points are evenly distributed around that circle. Click the green check mark to accept, and you should see that our points have been added to our model and in our feature manager tree. At the moment, you may notice that we can't see our reference points that we have created, even though they are in the feature manager tree. And if we click on them or move our mouse over them, they will highlight. This is because they are not, the visibility of them is not enabled. So you can control this by going to the visibility options at the top here and just clicking on the arrow so it drops down and you're looking for this dot, which is viewpoints. So you just click on that and that way they are always going to show in it in your model. Or if you don't want them to show, you can just do the same thing and reverse the action. This completes how to add reference points to the assembly. Next, we're going to look at reference axes and coordinate systems. The axis reference geometry tool can be accessed in the same way as the first tool. So either through the insert menu or through the assembly and then reference geometry. This time we're clicking on axes. Again, we have a bunch of options to select from, so we're going to go through each one. The first option is the one line edge axis, and it can utilize any existing line, edge, or axis to create additional reference axis. So we'll click on this one. And if we click the right edge of the block, a reference axis will appear in that area. It's a little hard to see, but if I click on OK, you can see our axis is created there as well as in our feature manager tree. We also don't need our other reference geometry points or this axis. So again, as with any other feature, we can just right click on it and go to delete and we can just select these other ones by holding down control on your keyboard, selecting each access point, right clicking on it and going to delete. Again, going back to our reference geometry tool and then axis, and we will continue on to look at the two planes option. The two planes option lets us choose any two faces or planes to create an axis where they intersect. So if we select this top face and this side face, it's going to create an, a reference axis where these two faces intersect. We can right click, go to clear selections. The next one we're going to look at is two points vertices. So the two planes, if we select this face here and this top face, it's going to create an axis where these two kind of intersect with each other. It's important to note that this axis does not physically coincide with either part in the assembly, but the axis remains linked to the assembly geometry. 
So to demonstrate what this means, if we click OK and then grab this pin and move it over to here and update, our axis will update to reflect those changes. To make it more apparent, if I click on this part, right click to rotate the part and then update, just click on our axis again, you can see that it's now updated to match where that kind of intersection would be between that face and that face. So using our undo button control Z, we are just going to step back. We don't need this axis anymore, so we can just right click, go to delete, uh, click on our part, our green pin, and just rotate it back to sort of close to the original position, and then go back to our reference geometry, just making sure nothing's selected by clicking off into empty area, and then going to the axis. And then we can take a look at the two points vertices option. So this option allows us to choose any two points in the assembly to create a reference axis. So for example, making sure our two points vertice option is selected, we can pick this point here and this point here, and it's going to create a reference axis between those two parts. Again, if we click OK, we can see our reference axis there, and I may even drag this part over here and then rebuild it and then have a look at the axis, and it's still going to be directly connecting between those two parts, so it updates as well along with any changes of the model. This also gives me an opportunity to show you how to edit a, an existing reference geometry, so it's just like any other feature. Simply right-click on it or single-click on it, go to Edit Feature, and then you can make any changes that are required. For example, we can clear our selections and then look at the next option, which is the cylindrical conical face option. So with this option, it allows us to click on any cylindrical or conical face to create a reference axis along the face central axis. What this means, so making sure cylindrical conical face is selected, we can pick this and it's basically doing an axis directly in the center of that cylinder. Or if we clear the selections, we could select this arc and it's going to put a reference axis right in the middle axis of the arc. So clear the, our selections once more, and our final option is the point and face plane. This allows us to create an axis by choosing a plane and a point. So to demonstrate this, we might again grab this part by right clicking so we can rotate it slightly, and then we can select the top face and this point, and this is going to create, it's a little hard to see here, but it's going to create an axis from this point, but it is normal to this face. To give you another example, if I was to clear these selections and then select this top face and then maybe this point, because this face is flat and then this point is just going to create an axis directly straight up because it is perpendicular to that face. If we were to click on the cancel button, obviously this is just going to cancel any changes we made. And then we can right click on our axis and just delete. Control seven to go back to a isometric view and just try and right click on this part, rotate it roughly to the original position. That completes the reference axis. And now we're going to move on to how to insert a coordinate system. The reference coordinate system can be accessed in the same way, so just go to the reference geometry and then go to coordinate system. So a reference coordinate system, if you look down here, you'll see a little gimbal, which is a Z, X, and Y axis, and it just gives you a representation of what direction things are in a 3D space. So a reference coordinate system is kind of like adding another one of those, and then you can use that to sort of base your design around in some sort of way. So you can see our original reference triad down here, and then you should see here, starting from our origin point, is our reference geometry triad. In the property manager, you'll see four selection fields available, which are used to define our coordinate system. So you have our selections and then X, Y, and Z axes. The coordinate system requires an origin point and then three selections to define the directions of the axes. Notice that there is only two reverse direction buttons for the X and Y. That is because once you define those two, it kind of locks in which direction the Z axis would be anyway. Basically, you can fully define a coordinate system by just having two axes selected. So to position our coordinate system, System. To define its origin point, we can select this point. So you can see our triad moves over to that location. And then we can define our X direction by clicking this line, and then our Y direction by clicking this line. And you can see it's actually got the direction of the Y going in this direction. So we could reverse that if we wanted to just by clicking on this button here. And you can see that's going to fully define our coordinate system. 
So just to give you another quick idea of what I mean by these reverse buttons, if I was to reverse the direction of the X axis, you can see that's sort of flipping the direction of our Z. The direction of the Z axis is always determined by something called the right hand rule. The right hand rule is if you take your right hand and you point to your thumb, that's going to be the X axis. And then you use your index finger, that's going to be the Y axis. And then if you take your middle finger and you point it at like a perpendicular angle, that's going to be the direction of the Z axis. So if you can kind of imagine that as the gimbal in your design, this being the Y, so the X, Y and the Z axis, it's always going to be sort of pointing or the Z is always going to be pointing in that direction depending on where you rotate or place that coordinate system. So to accept your coordinate system just click on the OK button and you can see our coordinate system is now defined at that point in, in those directions. It's also now available in our feature manager tree and so it can be either edited or deleted from here just like you could with any other feature. This completes our lesson on reference points, axes and coordinate systems. These tools are kind of used in certain situations and you probably won't use them too often until you get more comfortable with SOLIDWORKS. You'll sort of realize their purpose when you go to design something and you realize that to create a feature or to maybe create a sketch, you need some sort of reference in space to base that feature from. And that's usually where reference geometry sort of plays its part because that point in space would be your reference geometry. So you'd put something in place and then you could start to build features or whatever you needed from that reference geometry. That's sort of what their purpose is for. That brings us to the end of the lesson. So I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.